higher. Right then, so the next bit. So this is all about a lamina. So you imagine a sheet which is pinned at that point there. Now this was actually in one of the spec papers, but I don't think I've seen it in any proper papers. We used to have it in the pack, but we took it out. Right, so it has to be a perpendicular distance. So let's have a think about this, the one Newton here. This one Newton, we can't do anything with. It's just pulling it straight up, isn't it? So the one Newton is just pulling straight up. So there's no turning moment there. So there's no turning effect. I can't get a right angle. But the 4 Newton is quite nice. So if you look at the 4 Newton, I've got a very definite perpendicular distance there. And that's going to take us anti-clockwise. So the 4 Newton is going to go anti-clockwise. So just remember that, the anti-clockwise. And it'll have a distance of 3 in between it. Right, now then, let's have a think about B. My problem here is I need perpendicular distances. So if I extend the 2 Newton force all the way across, then I've got a perpendicular now, and a perpendicular which is 2 metres distance away. There. So what about you? I'm going to put the 4 Newton in, just to show you. So the 4 Newton will be a force of 4 Newtons times by a distance of 3. So that's 12 Newton metres going anti-clockwise. Now let's have a look at the, the 2 Newton one now. So the 2 Newton one, so it's a force of 2 Newtons, but the actual perpendicular distance is 2. And it's this idea that if I extend this force, the full length of it, I can get my perpendicular distance. So that's going to be 4 Newton metres. And that, if you imagine it pivoting at A, it's going to try and swing it clockwise. So the only other one I've got is a 3 Newton one. And that needs to be um, at right angles, so you see that perpendicular distance. So once again, if I extend the 3 Newton one, I've got a perpendicular distance here. So people don't like this bit of B, where you're extending the forces to make sure you've got a perpendicular. So that would be, it's going from 1 to 3. So that's going to be 2, isn't it, long as well? There. So for the 3 Newton force, and that's going to swing it around clockwise. So the force will be 3, the distance is 2. So that's 6 Newton metres clockwise. So the total for my clockwise will be 10. And the total for my anti-clockwise will be 12. So if I did it as like clockwise, take anti-clockwise. So that would be a 6 plus 4, take 12. And have a minus 2 Newton metres acting clockwise. So I took clockwise as my positive. Whereas, if I did it as anti-clockwise minus clockwise, I'd have 12 minus 6 plus 4. So I'd have like the 2 Newton metres acting anti-clockwise. But it's up to you which way you do it, as long as you're clear what you're doing. It doesn't really matter, does it? Well, they've got 4 though. Can I not add up? Where have they got 4? Uh, 1, 2, 3, that's 4, that's 12. And then the 2 Newton one is 2 away, so that's 4. And the 3 Newton one is also 2, that's 6. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Oh, they put a 2 by 2 times 2 is 2. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Right, half a minute left. There's quite a bit of bump there to go through, so I'll stop the video. Okay, bye-bye.